We interrupt our program to bring you a special broadcast. The German news agency, Transocean, said to Here's another late development, and this news keeps coming in. Man, oh man, we have been eating good the last few days, you dig? I mean, first you have the Justice League trailer, which is... You know, it's just it's a bunch of sex there. And then you have the Mortal Kombat trailer. And for anybody that knows me, you knew I was going to get horny for the Mortal Kombat trailer. Can't really say that Mortal Kombat is sexier than Justice League based on these two trailers. But either way, it made me want to take my pants off. The bigger mystery of these videos is, am I doing this trailer review without any pants on? I suppose you'll never know. Putting all of that aside, what's up Kryptonians? Welcome to another video where I break down another trailer. Today we of course are talking about the big Mortal Kombat trailer, the official first Red Band trailer that was released earlier on Thursday. Like I said, I'm a big Mortal Kombat fan. I grew up on those games. I love a lot of those games. Also, I did kind of like the first Mortal Kombat movie. I mean, I don't think it's great, but for its time, it's okay, it's solid. The second one, you know, we don't need to talk about that one today. The bottom line is that video game movies have been, you know, not really that good for most of their history. But I will say the tide is turning, my friends. Over the last few years, I would say that we've actually had a solid influx of new video game movies that have turned out to be pretty good. Mortal Kombat, it's near and dear to my heart, man. Don't mess with Mortal Kombat. Please, please, I'm begging. Shao Kahn or whoever else is out there, Raiden, the, 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 the council, the gods, please don't let this movie be terrible. Please, please, I'm begging you with all of my heart, please. Normally I'd get into the trailer and talk about like the storylines that are set up throughout the trailer, but to be honest, the storyline is, is whatever. Mostly this movie is gonna be used for building up the lore. I could go into this trailer being like, oh, I wonder how the story is gonna look. No, 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 no. The story is secondary for a movie like this, okay? As long as they build the lore up right and they handle some certain things where I don't care about that. I wanna see some gore. I wanna see some blood. I wanna see some guts. I wanna see intestines, hearts being ripped out. I wanna see the spine ripped out of someone's ass. I wanna see a spleen torn out of someone's body and then eaten with salt and asparagus and lemon pepper. I don't know, maybe some chicken hors d'oeuvres on the side. Turn your nose up at me all you want, but I bet you if Hannibal Lecter decided to cook all of that in season four of Hannibal, hopefully season four of Hannibal, I bet you that shit would look good and I bet you'd be hungry for some of it. Bottom line is this trailer gave us a lot in terms of fatalities. It earned the red band. Obviously there's plenty of blood, plenty of gore. There's a great montage towards the end of the trailer where there's a bunch of really awesome fatalities. Shang Tsung shows up and he says, finish him or whatever. And you see Sonya, you see Kano, you see Liu Kang, you see a bunch of characters get into that fatality thing where they just rip apart their opponent. I'm not sure, but there may have actually been a moment where Melina gets a fatality towards the end. It happened a little bit too quick for me to notice, but it didn't look good for Melina. Speaking of Melina, it was awesome to see her and the other characters treated with so much respect in this trailer. That's the one thing I was also looking for was the character designs. And for the most part, the character designs are on point with a few tweaks and a few changes here or there that I feel like they're just saving for the movie or for movies that go beyond this one. Like for example, Melina, there's a great shot of her licking her sigh, which as a grown man, it did things to me. It did certain things to me seeing her do that. Then the other part of me is like, what about her teeth? What about her trademark teeth or whatever? I feel like that's a detail that they might be saving for the movie. Likewise, Kano. Kano's in this and you do see him shooting a laser out of his eye at some point. And it does look like Kung Lao is blocking it at another point. We don't see that iconic metal titanium plate that like, covers half of his face or covers his eye or whatever. Like we don't see see the full robot eye extension from Kano. And I feel like, okay, maybe part of it is they've hidden it under his skin. Like maybe that's part of it. Like you see his skin is really scarred and beat up. Some other explanation in the movie, but stuff like that, I feel like they're saving that for the film. You know what they're also saving for the film is this character named Cole. This character named Cole is being billed as the main protagonist, not Liu Kang. Like Liu Kang has usually been kind of the prototypical protagonist in a lot of the Mortal Kombat shit. You do see Liu Kang and you do see Kung Lao and you know they're gonna play a huge role in the movie, but the movie is framed from the perspective of this character named Cole, who's an MMA fighter. And as far as I know, he's a made up character for the movie. A lot of speculation about his identity and you can't expect there not to be speculation, right? I mean, you can't introduce a brand new character into the Mortal Kombat lore and not have us think that it has something to do with something else. Now, part of me is like, they could be boring and they could just make him the eyes and the ears for the audience. And the casual audience is coming into this movie that doesn't know a lot about the lore, about Shao Kahn, about Shang Tsung, about Lord Raiden, about the Mortal Kombat 
combat uh, tournament. So maybe he's being used to build up the lore and the world building for the audience. Then there's a part of me that's kind of like, you know what, he's an MMA fighter, maybe his stage name is Johnny Cage. It feels weird to have a Mortal Kombat movie without Johnny Cage. Johnny Cage is supposed to be a big part of this thing. So a lot of people speculating that he could be Johnny Cage. Other people are speculating that he could be Kawhi Liang. It could be the other Sub-Zero and I, I, I don't know why then Sub-Zero would be trying to kill him in this movie. Then again, when you look at Sub-Zero in this trailer, played by Joe Taslim, who by the way, I feel like it's gonna absolutely knock this role out of the park. It looks like he's more of a villain. Like Sub-Zero is being billed as one of the main villains of this movie. Hanzo Hisashi, uh, Scorpion, is usually being billed as the villain who comes back to life and is, you know, obviously he has this big feud with Sub-Zero, but he's usually portrayed as the villain. Maybe he's not so much the villain in this movie. Sub-Zero being controlled by Shang Tsung, is there something else going on that we don't? I don't know, I'm just saying people are still speculating over Cole and that's the uh, one big takeaway from this trailer. Another thing is that you do see a couple of shots of Earth's champions together and there is like a brief shot of Sonya sparring with Kano, but Sonya and Kano are supposed to be like mortal enemies <laughs> in the other game. So I'm kind of curious, like obviously I mentioned that shot where Kano shoots Kung Lao with his red laser or whatever. I don't know, it just makes me curious as to like what direction they're taking Kano because it certainly appears like for at least part of this movie, he's not gonna be a villain. Obviously you start off the trailer with Sub-Zero breaking off Jax's arms, which is paid in full later on in the trailer with Jax look like he's about to crush somebody's skull with his arms, which is, is again, it's awesome. Really one of my favorite moments is when Scorpion and Sub-Zero are fighting and then uh, Sub-Zero like cuts him and takes some of the blood. He freezes it, turns it into a dagger and stabs him. I also like that they made Scorpion's thing a weapon like that shoots out like the, the I forget the actual Japanese name for it, but it's an actual weapon. It's not just something that like opens up in the middle of his I'm like, hello, here I am. Some corny and cheesy stuff. I mean, let's be honest, that birthmark line was, <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit funny. Hey, that's a birthmark. What do you mean? It means he was born with it. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, that's, <laughs> okay, what is this movie? Mortal Kombat, what does that mean? Uh, people fight to the death in it. Yeah, that's kind of what's implied by Mortal Kombat. Definitely this movie's gonna have some cheese, maybe some corny moments, but overall, I like the tone and the feel of the trailer. I love the character designs. I think a lot of them are very faithful. Can we also talk about how beautiful the visuals are? I mean, did you see Liu Kang's dragon fatality? Ugh. Art. And the little rendition of the old theme that's like played in a different way towards the end of the trailer. I mean, stuff like that. It makes a Mortal Kombat fan like me happy. By the way, guys, did you see the Baraka Easter egg? And did you see the other Easter egg that has to do with Katana? Did you guys see it? I'm not gonna lay it out here, but I'm just saying if you saw it, good for you. Those are my thoughts on the Mortal Kombat trailer. I thought it was it was actually pretty awesome and it, it made me excited to see the movie. It comes out in April. Let me know what your thoughts on the trailer are in the comment section down below. Please like and subscribe to the Super Fan Show. And as always, if you like what you see, tell me how you feel. Stay tuned to hear more from the Man of Steel.